reaction when you saw the USA team yesterday, the roster come out? Yeah, I think uh, I'm excited for the girls that are on the team. Um, I know it's the most competitive team in the world, and I know it could have gone either way of me being on the team, me not being on the team. So, um, you know, I'm excited for them. Uh, I'm going to be rooting them on to, to win gold. Um, I, I was a kid that grew up uh, watching the Olympics. So, um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun to watch them. What was your level of disappointment not hearing your name on the roster? Honestly, no disappointment. Like, I think it just gives you something something to work for. Um, you know, it's a dream. You know, hopefully one day I can be there. And uh, I think it's just a little more motivation. Uh, you, know, you remember that. And, um, you know, hopefully in four years, when four years comes back around, you know, I can be there. Did you have a direct conversation with the managing director or whomever's over there at USAB recently? Yeah, it, yeah, they called me and, and let me know and uh, before everything came out, which was you know really respectful of them, and I appreciated that. And they did the same for every girl that made the team or every girl that um, didn't make the team. You know, there's a lot of players in the, in the Olympic pool, so uh, it wasn't like I was the only one they had to call. They had to make quite a few calls. Are you looking forward to a break, you know, yeah. from... Olympic action, basketball yeah, in general, I guess. Absolutely. I mean, it's going to be really nice. I mean, I've loved competing at every single second, but it's going to be a, a great month for my body to, you know, first of all, like, get rest and get healthy and just get time, a little time away from basketball and the craziness of everything that's been going on and, um, you know, just find some peace and quiet for myself. Um, but then additionally, like, a great opportunity for us to work and get better, a great opportunity for myself to get in the weight room, um, to work on the court and work at things that I want to get better at that I maybe didn't have time going from college to the pro season. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, but at the same time, like, we still have a, a month of games where we have a lot of opportunities to win a lot of games. So that's where my main focus is. All right. So I think we've been going about this all wrong. And when I say we, I mean me. I feel like I've been going all about this all wrong because – of my expectations that I have for Caitlin Clark and being in the WNBA. Um, I expected her to go in there and dominate, just like how I saw her dominating all the highlights when she was in college, just like how when I saw her in the uh, NCAA tournament, I saw her out there dominating. She was bowling. I was expecting all of that to transfer over to the WNBA because every my assessment of the WNBA since I had watched it when it became the WNBA was that it was, it was garbage. There was nothing there. The product was terrible. And y'all need somebody like Kaden to come in there and change everything around. Boy, was I wrong. Boy, was I wrong that there's already been talent there. And that's why these girls are mad. They mad because there is talent in the WNBA and they feel like everything that we see right now, we believe it's because of Caitlin Clark. When those girls for the last two, three years have been turning around the WNBA. It just so happens that the world, the media, the, the fans... The sponsors got behind Caitlin because they saw this American dream. They saw this American dream in college and what it could be when it gets to the pros. So they decided to jump behind it and push it forward. It had nothing to do with the WNBA. The WNBA is over there wondering, why didn't y'all get behind us the way you're getting behind Caitlin? And I can tell y'all because y'all didn't have anything to show. The entertainment value over there was extremely low. Wasn't nobody trying to watch layup drills. I told y'all that. So when they saw Caitlin, this person out there who's spin move, crossover step back three shooting from the logos she's rebounding she's don't assist have y'all y'all should see some of her passes that's what they was expecting for the WNBA and guess what that is not what they have seen listen if I'm the casual viewer which I am I'm the casual viewer but I'm also the competitor when I come here and I see what I'm seeing right now I am not entertained I am not impressed not consistently because you got sprinkles of excellence here and there when you got Kalen. But the sprinkles of excellence comes because the majority of the females who are playing WNBA basketball, they're really good. If they out there, they're good. And the top teams have played against Kalen like more than twice by now. I think they played the Liberty three times. They didn't play the Sun three times. They didn't play the Aces. The Storm. These are really, really good teams in the WNBA that they put against them right out the gate. And Caitlin has had no time for the true transitioning from, from college or amateur to pro. She finished the tournament and went right into the draft, right into preseason ball, right into regular season. She has no time to rest. You heard her in a dang interview, in a conference. She said it. Hell, Maybe this is the best thing for Caitlin right now, not to be on this Olympic team, because she feels like she can work on her mental. She feels like she can work on her body, her conditioning, get in the weight room, take some time off of rest. It's been basketball 24-7 for this girl. 
It's been basketball 24-7. The, the, the deals, everything that has come her way. She's 22 years old, and they're putting the pressure of the world on her. They are, not the WNBA. And the WNBA players and the committee, all the people, they got a problem with that. They got a problem with that. And, <clears throat> and it might seem like they take it out on her, which they kind of are. <laughs> they out there talking. Yeah, they is. Y'all know they hitting her and all this. So they're doing this shit on purpose. But they feel like they got a reason to. Because we were building this product. And there's no way y'all going to come over here and say that she's the reason why it is the way it is. But God dang it. Yes, the hell it is. Yes, it is WNBA. The way, why it is the way it is right now is because of Caitlin Clark. If y'all saw the last game she played against the Sun, the fans... That you, you you could hear them when she missed a shot. You could hear it go, oh, how the hell can I hear this in another person's stadium? Why am I hearing people feeling bad that the opponents are missing shots? When she got to got the game, they put it back in. The crowd is cheering. We want Kaylin. We want Kaylin because, damn it, they paid money to go see her. and You done took her ass out the game. We're not standing for this. That's how the fans feel. But, guys. That is the expectations that are on this girl. You got to realize that they've been waiting on her. The people in the WNBA have been waiting for her. They just took the South Carolina game plan on how to defeat her. They took the plan. If y'all watched that South Carolina-Iowa game, the championship game, Kayla was bowling. She was bowling. It wasn't until the, the last half that they, they switched it up. They switched how they defended her, and they start to neutralize her, and that's how they ended up pulling it off. So everybody in the WNBA is using that same game plan. Yo, we going to double-team her. We going we gonna to pressure her. We going to put a body on her. We going to full-court press her. We going to get in her face. We, as soon as she put that ball down, hey, we reaching for it. If y'all seen DJ Nate Carrington defense on, um, on Kayla Clark, she make her look like a, a, a freaking middle school kid out there when she's taking the ball from her. Kaylin is playing timid. She's not comfortable. And she's not comfortable because she's been thrown into a, a team of brand new players. Have you ever, listen, this is Kaylin's job she's at right now. Has it ever been that easy for you to adjust to your coworkers? I bet you it hasn't. So now she has to do the same when she came from a team that knew exactly where she was going, where she was going to go to as she came off the pick. I can find her anywhere on this court so I can pass her because I know she's going to shoot a three. She's going to find me. She's the, she's the primary ball handler. But in the WNBA, they waited for her to be the primary ball handler so they could double team and get the ball from her. They are scoring points off of all of her turnovers. Now, that's a big issue with Kaylin and WNBA turnovers, and we all see it. We all see it. So take this time, Kaylin. Take all the time you got. Because y'all play tonight against the Atlanta Dream, and I, I feel like y'all going to go out there and do very well because y'all had time. I think she just needs time to work on her rhythm on our pace, the speed of the game when it comes to the WNBA. Just because I'm not, I need to see, right? I need to see what was going on in college in order to keep me posted, to keep me positioned where I am right now watching that game. But there are some shades and some glimpses of like greatness out there in the WNBA that could keep you there. But you just got to get over the frustration from watching Kaitlyn play like how she's playing. It's just that's, that is what it is. That viewer that came to the game that watched her after the game against LSU, and 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 before I keep going, shout out to Bayou Barbie. Shout out to Angel Reese over there. She's balling right now. She put up another double double. She currently she's leading the rookie race again. The last time I said this, Kayla came out there and balled, but Angel's leading the rookie race and she looks good out there. I just want her to work on. <laughs> I want her to work on her 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 shot. Right, like it doesn't look fluid. It's like she just hoisted it up there. This is no, this is not a shot at you, Kaylin. I mean, like, Kaylin, this is not a shot at you, Angel. This is me looking at your game and seeing how you battle in the paint, see how you getting your points. Hell, she did excellent. I think she was eight for ten from the field. Most of her points just come from free throws. So she balling now. She's quietly balling, quietly putting together a game because she don't got no pressure. The attention's not on her like that. Not on her to perform. The attention's on Kaitlyn Clark. The pressure on her to perform. When it comes to Angel, they look at, I don't even think they look at her like that. Remember what I said? Angel used it for me. When you heard her name, you thought about TikTok. But not no more, damn it. Not no more. She's over there balling. I can tell her frustration too. Look, these girls are frustrated. 
And I'm sorry that, Kaylin, you're in the way of their frustration. But you know what happened? The, the WNBA didn't pick you. I told you the sponsors picked you. The fans picked you. The media picked you. That's who picked you. And that's why everybody else hates you. You know what it's like? It's like the Dallas Cowboys. I keep bringing the Dallas Cowboys up because everybody knows the Dallas Cowboys. Fans of the sport don't dislike the Cowboys. They dislike Cowboys fans because they are some of the most obnoxious people who walk the planet. And I got to tell you, I bet you people feel the same way about Caitlin Clark fans because whenever there's an issue that's going on, they put it all on everybody else and not on Caitlin. It's almost like y'all don't see the, her flaws. It's like everybody else is the reason why she, these things are happening to her. That's that's what people see. I'm, I don't feel this way, but I'm telling y'all, I un, I notice the perspectives of others, and this is how they feel. They they are like, how in the hell can y'all still be over there cheering and root for this girl? She's playing like garbage. How can y'all be over there? Look at her. She looks pitiful out there. This is what they think right now. But for the fans who follow Kaylin, y'all also know this. Y'all have to know this. The WNBA is not an easy league. It is the 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 top competitors in women's basketball. They put them all in the same place, these grown-ass women. And now you got these kids to come up in there. Now they got to prove themselves. You think the WNBA players is going to let them have this? Is going to roll or let them have it? Because they still got young blood in there. So they got a lot of young blood up in there. And they want to be seen too. So whenever we go against Kayla Clark, we're going to make sure that y'all see us too. That's how they feel. They, they want you to know that our product is good. But it wasn't before. It, it wasn't before, ladies. I'm, I'm sorry. The WNBA was not something that people want to sit down and watch for two hours. We got other things we could be doing out there. I got to go cook. I need to go clean. I got to go pick. <laughs> I got medication I got to pick up from the <laughs> from H-E-B. <laughs> People would have rather done anything than to watch WNBA basketball, but it ain't like that no more. It's not like that because the product was changing itself around and Kaitlyn Clark and Angel Reese. That's what it is. They want y'all to be like, it's because of all of this. That's, how, that's what they want. They want you to see that one person does not make this business or this organization that things go. But dang it, one person did bring the attention that y'all needed. Got to give it up to her. One person brought the attention that y'all needed to continue to keep going. So I don't care. Y'all go out there and keep balling. Caitlin, go do your thing. Drown out all this stuff. Get with your team. Don't worry about the, the Olympic stuff no more because it's over. You're already on alternate team. And I, 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 I hate, I got to admit this. I think she's going to be on there once they see that Greg can't play. They wasn't going to take Dana Tarasso off this team. They're not going to take her off there because she's the veteran. She's going to keep everybody in check when they go out there. She's been, on, she's been on five Olympic gold teams straight. That team has won seven gold medals straight. They don't have a problem with winning. So all that, that talk, right, about the, the International League being so tough for Kaylin and the fact that she didn't play enough uh, uh, practice games to be on the team um, – her stats aren't good enough to be out there. Like, all this hoopla, right? That is not true. But I can say this. She, she might have an issue adjusting to them. She might not. I don't think she should because those are the best of the best. And Kaylin is one of the best of the best. She is. She, she's one of the best. That's why we, why we watched. That's why we watched. She, she didn't just all of a sudden they, they just make this shit up that she was good and she get over there and she's doing terribly. No, she was great. She's just going against the best of the best right now, guys. Accept it. God, I accept it. My expectations were, were way too high for her, I feel. Now, we're going to see in this game tonight, I believe she's going to turn it around. I believe she's going to have another great performance. I'm not looking for her to go out there and drop 30, 40. What I am looking at, I need her to go out there, protect the ball, lower your turnovers, find your teammates, find your spacing on the court to get your shot off. Make your spacing on the court. Find it. You do this. Put the ball on the court and stop being so scared. Control it. Go out there and handle up, man, because it's time. It's, it's, it's time. It's, it's, it's due. And I don't want fans to start walking away from the game because you're not seeing your favorite player do good. Give it some time. Have some patience. I got people out there looking at me like I'm pandering to pandering and I'm tap dancing because I talk about Kayla Clark, but I talk about this because it's the reason why I watch the sport now. It's the reason. I can't, I can't deny it, but I've also seen all the other talent that's out there. And they there, guys. And they hungry. These people are hungry, and they couldn't wait for this moment. Now they got it. So they're going to eat off of Kaylin every chance they get. Shit, make sure you play this for Kaylin so you got something to give to them people. And you got something for yourself. 
<laughs> ah, shit, guys. Look, we about to start wrapping this thing up, man. I appreciate y'all for stopping through. Before we get off this thing, though, man, shout out to the, the Celtics. They are about to be your next NBA champions. It's, it's just a matter of when. Uh, they might... They might end up going back playing five games because I, I just can't count. I just I can't count Luca out like that. He going he got to get at least one. He got to get at least one. I can't count Irvin. I they got to get at least one. But if they role players don't come to play and they can't neutralize some of the top ten over there, the Celtics, it's a wrap. Y'all getting swept because th- that team is playing as a complete unit over there, man. Everybody's doing their part. Everybody's picking up the slack. But over there in Dallas, you just got Luka balling. And Irvin just balled. I had 30-plus points, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough because nobody else came. That team cannot afford to have its role players be off. Maybe one of your superstars, but not, not a superstar and the role players. It ain't going to work. So since Kyrie came to play in this game, role players, y'all got to come to play too. Y'all got another game in Dallas. Y'all don't get it done, man. Y'all going home. Y'all, y'all going home. Well, y'all already at home. <laughs> I think I'm going to win on y'all home court. I probably I went on y'all home court. I'll go stump all over y'all logo like how Kyrie stumped all over the Celtics logo. <laughs> now, don't do that. Y'all going to bring bad juju on yourself, guys. It was, it's been a good fight. It's been a good finals. Everything has been good, guys. I, look, I thank y'all for being here. All the new subscribers. I got to do a video. I hit 500 subs, man. I thank y'all so much for tuning in and listening to my voice. And I feel like y'all come over here and you check me out, man, because I'm honest. And like we need honesty in these times right now. I'm gonna give it to you full full throttle. If Caitlin out there playing like crap and trash, I'm gonna tell you she playing like crap and trash. I'm gonna tell you like anybody is. If I tell you I'm wrong, I, I'll tell you I'm wrong, and I was wrong. I was wrong about the WNBA. Oh well, well I eat it. So let's see what Caitlin can do. Let's see if Boston go go ahead and pull this off, man, on Friday. Let's see. I, I, I want to see all this stuff happen. I want to see her make it because they, they was against her for so long. I want to see her do it. So, you guys, thank y'all for tuning in. If y'all are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button to become a part of Chocolatey Crew. Hit that like button. Hit the notification button so you know when your boys drop videos. Guys, thank y'all for tuning in. I'm out of here. Peace.